Hello everyone, welcome to Programming Credit. Today in this video, I will discuss about some of the points that you should consider if you are just getting into a uh, data science world or if you are probably in your final year and probably taking a course and you want to step into data science world or if you've already stepped into data science world but it hasn't been a lot of time that you have been working as a data scientist. So I think these points will help you to maybe make your progression a little more smoother. So that's exactly what I'll be discussing in this video. I hope you will find this video helpful. If you do, please give it a thumbs up. And if you are new here or subscribe to the channel, please get subscribe to the channel. It always keeps me motivated to make such videos for you guys. And you can also join our community on Discord and Telegram. We have a very helpful community there. So with that being said, let's start our discussion. The first thing is learn Git or GitHub. So when you're working alone on some project, um, especially when you are learning about data science, you don't feel like you need to use Git, but I think it would be a good practice to learn Git because when you will go to an organization, they will not be working alone on a project. There you will be working in a team. And when you're working in a team, you need to collaborate on a code base. You need to know Git. So if you already know Git before getting into an organization, it will be less of a hassle for you to cope up with what your team is doing. And uh, man, you'll be able to manage the code base quite easily so that's the first thing and i have mentioned this in quite a lot of my videos if you watch my videos regularly or if you have known me for a very long time you will already be aware of this so i wanted to include this in this video as well with this being said let's move on to the next point which is don't only use notebooks yeah, of course notebooks are really good tools when you are in your research phase when you are just trying out different algorithms you're trying out different parameters doing data visualizations once you are done with that once you finalize your visualizations once you have finalized your um, algorithm once you have finalized your hyperparameters try to productionize it and by productionizing i mean maybe create a streamlit app or you can maybe have a, a Flask application, something like that, because that way you will learn about how to move your code from research phase to a production phase. So you will learn quite a lot there. So I would say always try to practice that as well. And it will help you in, uh, in the company because you will not only leave your code in research phase, you would want to put it in production because if you're just doing your research phase and if you're uh, keeping the code in your uh, IPython notebook, um, it will not be of any use for the company. So it's always important to uh, productionize your code or at least learn how to productionize your code base and your data science project. Which takes us to our next point, which is it is not only about algorithms. You can learn all the algorithms, it is fine, but you also need to understand how to do data analytics and how to do data engineering, uh, feature selection, feature engineering, those kind of things. So, so a lot of times I have seen that some people, they're really good at machine learning. They know nitty gritty of all the algorithms. But when asked basic questions about data analysis or feature engineering, uh, things like that, they tend to struggle to answer those questions. So I would say it's not, don't just focus on machine learning algorithms. Yes, of course, they are one of the vital aspects of uh, data science but they are not everything so if you are just becoming a machine learning engineer i think you, sh you will be fine but if you want to be a data scientist then i think you need to know all the different aspects of uh, data science if you want to know more about uh, skills required for a data scientist i have already made a video i will leave a card or link into the description or in the pin comments so that you'll be able to go and check out that video as well so with that being said, let's move on to the next point, which is it's not only about technical stuff. So far, I've only talked about uh, technical skills. So yes, data science is not only about technical skills. You need to have good amount of soft skills as well because you will be conveying quite a lot of information, your analysis to your stakeholders, and not always they will be technical people. So you need to dumb down quite a lot of things for them to be able to understand so you need to understand how to convey your findings how to convey your analysis 
So communication skills, presentation skills, these are also very important. And when you're working with a wide amount of or wide variety of data, you also need to have good uh, ethical understanding because if you do not understand a lot of different ethical aspects of data science, sometimes your project or your use case that you are trying to solve can be really helpful, but then it can lead into a different different issues from legal perspective. So you need to understand about uh, ethical uh, implications of uh, your projects as well. So with that being said, let's move on to the next point, which is structure the problem in data science way. What I mean by that is, for example, you got a problem statement, for example, uh, cancer prediction, right? So you need to first understand what the problem is, because sometimes uh, the whole problem can be solved using just data analysis. You don't even have to apply uh, machine learning to it. So for example, you have a tabulator and it's not an image data. Uh, you can maybe do some analysis and if you are able to figure out okay there is this particular straight line which i can draw and or have a very um, static threshold and i can use this threshold to divide the data into cancerous and non-cancerous uh, data points i think it will solve the issue and you don't have to go on to training a huge machine learning model there your problem will be solved there so you need to understand that um it, it's really interesting and it's really uh, fancy to always jump into machine learning uh, now deep learning and then maybe to gen ai sort of problems uh, uh, solution it is always fancy but it's not always the most efficient way to do it so you also need to understand the problem first and then like i mentioned it could be a tabular data it could be image data so based on that if it is uh, if it is a problem which cannot be solved using just data analysis then you might want to uh, start looking into what kind of feature engineering you need to do or which kind of uh, feature selection you need to do. So for that, you need to do quite a lot of EDA. So what different type of EDA you want to perform? So a lot of times I've seen that as soon as people get a problem statement, they straight away jump into uh, writing a code, but uh, that's not the right way to do it. You first need to understand the problem. You then lay down all the steps that you wanna uh, execute and uh, then you can maybe start writing some preliminary code and do ADA and then you can move on to uh, further steps. So this will also give you a good experience in terms of uh, senior data scientist role and not just junior data scientist role. So if you are someone who is just junior, you might think I don't need to do it because it's uh, senior data scientist um, uh, responsibilities. But the thing is, these days, there are so many people who are trying to get into data science where the competition is so high. So if you are able to uh, show the hiring manager or the recruiter that you have performed these kind of steps in your, uh, in your pet project, I think it will give a very good impression to them that you are not just about writing codes. You do try to understand the problem statement and then also how to solve the problem step by step. And it sometimes saves quite a lot of time because if when you jump into writing a code straight away, you tend to try quite a lot of different things. And machine learning is something that takes time to train model and then get the output. So you'll have to wait for certain number of uh, hours, if not days, if the data is too huge. So if you're just waiting for that, you're wasting a lot of time. But then if you can think about a good algorithm and if you can think about a proper structure, you will save quite a lot of time beforehand. So I think it is very important and uh, you should try to practice that in your pet projects as well. With that being said, let's move on to the next point, which is don't rush. Every journey has its end. <laughs> These are not my words or code. I've taken it from one of the games I play, which is Genshin Impact. So there is a, there is this character called Zhongli. So I have taken this from him. So I really like this statement simply because when you're trying to learn quite a lot of things and data science is a, is a wide uh, field where there are so many things to learn, especially when you are a fresher or you are just trying to get into data science. Uh, don't try to rush because when you try to rush, you either don't understand things properly or sometimes the person in front, especially when you are in job and you're working on certain things and you try to rush, 
your manager or your colleagues they can quite clearly see that you are uh, you're being too desperate which is not which is not always a good thing uh, especially when you are not testing things properly so i think it's important to give some time and uh, let it come to you instead of rushing things and when you will try to work on certain things for good amount of time eventually you will get good at it and uh, i think then you will be able to move on to the next thing so give it some time don't try to rush uh, it will come to you automatically with that being said let's move on to the next point which is can't learn everything uh, when i say that obviously you need to understand the foundations but uh, as i said in the previous point data science is a is a wide and vast field where you cannot learn everything so you need to specialize yourself into a certain domain so for example if you are interested in computer vision if you like video data if you like image data you want to work with that then try to specialize yourself in that particular domain or if you like textual data uh, try to get better at natural language processing so pick a field which you like or you can also pick uh, various domains so for example if you're interested in healthcare sector try to do various projects in that try to understand how the data works or if you're interested in the financial sector try to do some analysis there try to explore different type of data from that particular domain and uh, gain some domain expertise in that particular domain uh, that way you will be very specialized to that particular field and uh, you'll be able to progress relatively easily in that particular domain and the reason why i'm saying this is uh, it's very important that you like that particular domain because when you try to specialize into certain things you will be doing that for a very long time and if you don't enjoy doing that then there is no point of doing it so it's very important to like a certain use case certain field certain domain and then uh, build your expertise in that particular domain so i think it's very important to like it uh, so, but then again you may ask how will i even know whether i like it or not it's a very good question especially when you are a fresher and you don't have a lot of experience that's when it comes all to your pet projects so you'll have to do projects from different uh, domains different uh, data sets different use cases and uh, once you try to do those projects you will automatically start to like one type of projects than other type of projects and that's when you will know that okay fine i really like computer vision sort of problems and i really want to get into this that's when you can start uh, uh, gaining more expertise and knowledge in that particular field and domain so yeah that's what i wanted to discuss in this video i hope you found this video helpful if you did please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe share like and comment uh, and do share your thoughts in the comments and do join programming kettle community on telegram and uh, discord i will see you in the next one happy learning bye